Okay, this video is to help the eighth graders working on day six of the packet. So let's take a look. Um, this first one's called Eighth Grade Functions, Who Has the Best Job? It says, Kelly works in an after-school pro program at an elementary school, and the table below shows how much money he earned every day. So this is all about Kelly. And then it says, Mariko has a job mowing lawns that pays $7 an hour. So that's about Mariko. So first thing you have to do, it says, who would make more money working 10 hours? Well, Mariko's easy because um, he's getting $7 an hour, and if he works 10 hours, that's $70. That one's easy. But for Kelly, you've got to work out some information. You've got to find the slope, or you have to find the constant of proportionality. Either one of those, you're looking at the y divided by x. So I'm going to use this point right here, and I'm going to do three. $33.60 divided by 4 because that's the y divided by x. When you get this number, you're going to find out how much Kelly makes per hour. Okay? And once you find out how much she make, he makes excuse me, per hour, you're going to take that number and then you're going to multiply it times 10 because it's for 10 hours and you're going to get an amount. So that'll tell you how much Marie, uh, Kelly makes in 10 hours and this tells you how much Mariko makes in 10 hours hours. So now you're going to take this information. Now it says on part B and C, you're going to be drawing the graph. So on part B, you're going to be drawing how much Kelly would make. So you're going to go to your graph paper on the next page, which looks like this, and I already drew my axes. And then on here, you're going to put some information. So down here, we're going to have hours. And then over here, we're going to have money that's made. And you're going to be graphing um, what's happening with uh, these two people. So you know that both of them are going to start at zero, zero, because if they're not working, they're not making any money. And then um, you're going to decide like, hey, let me go every four, one, two, th or every three, you know, however you want to do it. It's up to you how many places that you want to go. And then you're going to graph. You're going to graph what's going on. So for example, um, I know that Mariko is making $7 an hour, right? So um, I might make each one of these worth five dollars. Uh, maybe $2, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, you know, something like that. It just depends. And then I would say, okay, Mariko makes, in one hour, makes $7. And I would put, you know, something like right there. And then in two hours makes 14, right? And then I would draw Mariko's line. And then that's, and I would do the same thing for uh, Kelly. So that's what B and C is. B and C is drawing that line. So put that to the side. And then it says part D, how can you see who makes more per hour just by looking at the graphs. You can just look at it and see what's going on and explain it. So that kind of helps you with this one. Um, if we go to the rule of four, which is on the next page, you've got to focus on what this is saying here in the, um, the words. So it says your parents rent a car for vacation. They pay a $100 deposit and $50 a day. How much will they pay after five days? Well, the trick is you've got to see what's changing. When you're looking at the deposit and $50 per day, one of this is what your initial cost is. Remember, your y-intercept is your is your initial cost, okay? So whatever you're going to pay up front, that's going to be your y-intercept. And whatever is changing is going to be your slope, okay? So you're going to get those two pieces of information from here, and you're going to write those two numbers there. Now, when you go to write your expression, you have to remember y equals mx plus b, right? Okay, so what you're going to do is take your information. So whatever your slope is, whatever value that is, you're going to put in this spot. And then whatever value your y-intercept is, you're going to put in this spot. So then you're going to have your equation. All right, based on your equation, you're going to build your table. Okay, so you're going to build your table, right? And this is x and this is y. And all you need are like three points. You could do four points if you want. You know you have a y-intercept, so you know what zero and what that number here, this y-intercept, that number is going to go right there. So you already have a point right off the bat. So then figure out based on this, like, hey, what's after one day, two days, three days of vacation? how much money they're paying total. And then you're gonna take this information and you're gonna put it on the graph. And again, you're gonna choose words for your graph that um, that work. So when you're looking at what's changing and how things are changing, you're looking at days and money. So this is gonna be days and this is gonna be money. 
okay? And then um, since it only goes to five days, I would probably skip every other one, go one, two, three, four, five, and then get that on there. You know, if, if how much they, right off the bat, you know this is not going to be proportional because it's not starting at zero, zero. So this should help you figure out that piece, okay? So let's move on. Um, the next thing that you have to do is you are looking at constructing functions. And they do give you some um, paper to go with it on the next page if you need it. Um, I'm going to erase this one in case we need it. I don't think we're going to need it, but if you need it, I'm going to have it here just in case. So let's take a look at each problem one at a time. So this first one says, when Charlotte planted her tomato plant, it grew three inches in one week. Okay, so there's some information, three inches in one week. And after five weeks, the tomato plant was 23 inches tall. So here's some information, okay? So we have two points, right? I can say in one week, it grew three inches, and then in five weeks, it grew 23 inches. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take those points, and because I need to find the rate of change, the slope, and the y-intercept, I'm gonna take these points, this is x and this is y, and I'm gonna put it in slope formula. And remember, a slope formula looks like this. And when you plug it in, you're going to get a value here. What that is, that's your slope. So that's that one answer right here, change of slope. Now, what's the y-intercept? In other words, where did this plant start? Well, you're gonna to have to take your values and plug in and do some manipulating. Remember, we were talking about this before we left, about moving things around in an equation, right? So I need to find out what the B equals. Well, if I wanna know what the B equals, I can subtract MX from both sides. So I know that I can use Y minus MX equals B to get this Y intercept. So what do I need to do? Well, I need a point, so I'll probably use this one three as a point. Whatever the slope is, I'm gonna put the value of the slope there. I'm gonna put this X is one here and this Y is three here. And then I'm gonna do some order of operations and whatever number that works out to be, guess what? That's your Y intercept. So that should help you um, with that first problem. So let's take a look at the second one. The total cost of renting a vacation home includes a deposit and a daily rental fee of $125. A family rents a vacation home for five days and pay, I should say pay, not praise, $700. Assume the relationship is linear, find the rate of change and the slope. So we know the change is what's changing every day and the y-intercept is that initial value like what you're starting with. Here it's a little easier because they're talking about a deposit, okay? We also know that they're renting for $125 a day. So we know there's our slope right there, $125 a day. There's our slope. We just need to find the y. So remember, we can use this point of five days, $700, right? We can use this, this is our X and this is our Y. And then we have our M right here. And we can plug into what we talked about rearranging this to find this Y, to find the Y intercept. We can plug into Y minus MX equals B. And we can plug in and get information. So I can take this Y value, put it there the slope value, put it here, put this X value, put it here. So if I plug in all these numbers, I get 700 minus 125 times five. Whatever that works out to be, guess what? That's my Y intercept. So that worked out really easy, okay? All right, let's take a look at number three. In order to enter the state fair, there is an admission cost, okay? Each game is $3. Steven went to the state fair played four games and spent a total of $20 on admission and games. So once again, we're doing the same thing, or we can even do this one by um, logic, right? Because we know that he spent $20 altogether. He spent $20 altogether. And we want to find how much it changes. Well, we know each game is $3, right? So that's our change. There's our slope right there. And then now what we have to do is figure out how much... Um, they paid all together. Well, guess what? If he played four games, right? He played four games at $3 a game, right? We know that he spent $12 on games. Well, if he spent $12 on games, right? And he spent $20 total, I think you can see what the entrance fee was, right? By subtracting these two values. You subtract these two values from each other, you're gonna get that entrance fee. And guess what? That entrance fee? That's the initial value, okay? All right, let's take a look at this last one here. 
Um, this one says, after writing part of his novel, Thomas is now writing 16 pages per week. After four weeks, he has written 85 pages. Assume the relationship is linear. Find, the inter in find and interpret the um, rate of change and slope and initial value. So um, we're going to find that rate of change. What's changing? He's he is now writing 16 pages per week. There is our rate of change, right? That's what's changing. Um, we need to find, and we know, and here's our point. After four weeks, he's written 85 pages, okay? So we're going to do the exact same thing we did before to find out. We have to find out that initial value. And we know this initial value, this y-intercept, is going to be that part that he started with after writing part of his novel. How much is part of his novel? We need to figure that out. So once again, we can go back to what we created earlier with y minus mx equals b, and then we plug in all the things that we know already based on this piece of information. So I know here's the b, the m right there, right? 16 pages per week. Here's x and here's y. I'm gonna put these things in the right spot, do a little bit of math, and guess what? When I'm done, I'm gonna get the b, and then that's my y-intercept. So I've been able to do that, okay? So that hopefully explains this page a little bit. And then you have one more to go. So this one's asking you to find 30% of 900. So you have to remember a couple of things, okay? First of all, of means that you're multiplying, right? So let's go up here and let's uh, do this. Uh, no, let's actually let's do the visual, visual first. So I need 900. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn this sideways a little bit here um, so I can draw this. I'm going to draw nine bars, and each bar is going to be worth 100. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Get one more over here. Nine. Okay. So I have nine bars, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut all the bars into 10 pieces. Now somebody might say, why 10 pieces, Mrs. Dorless? Well, guess what? You need 10 pieces because 10 pieces represents 100%. So if I need to model this now what 30% of 900 is, that means that I need to color 30% or I need to color three of these. So here's my visual model. I'm going to color three of these because that's going to represent, so here's 30% of 100, 30% of 200. And so when I'm done, I'm going to have 30% of 900. Okay, so that's my visual. So how do we solve this? Um, some of you might remember about proportions. So let's remember our proportion, which set up like this, per cent is of. I don't know if you guys remember that back from seventh grade. So we have the percent right here, which is 30%. We know that this is always 100. So this is going to be 30 over 100. And then is, we don't know, um, we know we're looking for that. We're looking for that is. So that's going to be our X, and it's of 900. Okay? So what we're going to do is we have a proportion, and then the first step in a proportion is always to cross multiply. So we're going to cross multiply. I get 100 times X, which is 100X, and 900 times 30, which is 2007, see, not 27, and three zeros. Okay? 27,000. Okay, this is a one-step equation. I know you both you should know to divide both sides by 100. And when you do that, you're going to get a value. So that's going to be your answer for that. Now, how do you know your answer is correct? Well, what you're going to do for this box is you're going to take whatever you got for x. So let's write our original equation, which was 30 over 100 equals something over 900. Whatever you got here for the x you're going to put that number right there. You're going to put that number there, and then you're going to cross multiply, and both sides should be equal to each other. That's how you know you're correct. Now, you need to write a story. 
Um, when you're writing a story, you can um, say pretty much anything about this. You can talk about um, maybe uh, your goal is to do 900 sit-ups and you want to do 30% of it today. So find out what that is. Or something costs $900 and it's on sale 30% off what that is. So, you know, there's some different things that you can do for writing a story. So hopefully that explains all the parts that you had to do today. Um, I didn't do all of it for you. I left you a little bit of work, but I kind of sent you down the right path. All right, good luck.